very, very deep on how to be in your early 20s and what steps you need to make in order to get to age 35 as a multimillionaire, somebody who has insane social skills, somebody that's traveled the world, somebody who has freedom to do what it is that you wanna do, and somebody who's very, very happy. From there, ideally, you're able to have the kind of relationships that you wanna have, kind of dating life that you wanna have, kind of parties that you wanna have. So in other words, if you're in your early 20s, you're sitting here right now, your life kind of fucking sucks, I get that, right? Life's all fun, maybe when you're younger, you're in high school, you go to college, suddenly you're out there in your 20s, and you're just sort of out at wide open sea, you don't even know where to go. Um, well, what would it look like if you were to know the exact steps that you need to take so that within 15 years from now, your life is just completely and utterly insane? What would that look like? And I wanna reach out to you if you're in your early 20s because to be honest with you, you have the greatest advantage and disadvantage. And it's kind of a funny thing, here's what it is. Somebody at 35 or 40 or 50, if they're starting, would be able to get there hundreds of times faster than you. What's gonna take you 15 years, a 35 year old could do in two years because they're that much more intelligent than you. But you wanna know what you have at 20 versus what they have at 35? They won't do it and you will. These fuckers, these motherfuckers that are in their 30s and 40s and 50s will rarely ever listen to anybody. You can't tell them nothing. And you know, you talk to them about doing things that are a little bit hard and they're in too much of a comfort zone. The enemy of the best is the good and they are very, very much intoxicated with the good. So if you're somebody who's 30, 40, 50 and you're learning from me, take that as a fucking challenge not to be a dumbass and actually take on the learner's mindset of a 20 year old and then, funny enough, what's going to take the 20-year-old 15 years, you're going to do in two, but um, you have to actually do it, okay? But let's say that you're in your early 20s, <laughs> okay? What do you do? Well, first thing that I want you to have is a vision. What does this vision look like? Like, specifically, what do you look like by age 35? What does it actually look like? And so I want you to go into yourself walking into a room and just how you're buzzing with confidence. You don't give a fuck what anybody there thinks of you because you know that you're the fucking shit, Okay? You're that motherfucker. Fuck him. Fuck him, fuck him, fuck him. You're that motherfucker. You run shit, okay? Any room that you walk into, you run shit. You know that, right? Which means that you're not getting validation from the room. The room gets validation from you, motherfucker. It's not, the, the, the buyer-seller dynamic is not, oh, I'm scared and I go in the room and I have anxiety about where rooms I walk into and if people will like me, fuck all that shit. You are the person that other people want to get validation from. You're buzzing with energy. You love your life. You have gratitude. You're present to the moment. You're hilarious. You're funny. You're talkative. It's the shit, okay? All that. And that's how you walk into a room. Most people in that room are attracted to you. They're trying to meet up with you later. They're trying to run off with you on little adventures. They're trying to get your social media. They're asking you for it. That's not exceptional. That's called normal. That's what normal life looks like when you're not a fucking moron. But when you're a moron and you accept less than that, because accepting less than that is stupid, then that seems like this big lofty goal. It's not a big lofty goal. You can absolutely do it. Now, how about financially? I want to see you in a place where financially, imagine this, you're not stuck working a nine to five, having to work somebody else's hours and having to sit there just constantly hoping to get a little bit of time off work. And, and you know, for example, if you want to go skiing, you don't ski on Saturday and Sunday when the resort is packed. You go there on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, maybe even a little Friday when the resort is not packed because you actually are able to take time off during the week. Let's say that you want to go on a vacation. You know, you see somewhere that you'd like to go. You actually go there. You're able to take time off. You don't have to work around the clock. You take time off. Maybe you want to pick up a new hobby. How many people pick up new hobbies by their mid-30s? Maybe learn how to surf or go skiing or maybe learn how to go skydiving or something like that. But you're actually able to take time away from work and pick up new hobbies. Maybe you know that at some point you're gonna have a family and what kind of father or mother you're gonna be. And you're somebody who's able to actually spend real time with their kids. Like, do you actually wanna hit 40, have a family and not get to take off four or five years and spend some time with your family? Why don't have a midlife retirement? Maybe retire from 40 to 45 and take your kids on trips around the world and actually don't lose that time with your children instead of just working all the time and viewing that as normal. Why wouldn't you do that? I actually just did that. I took off four or five years recently. You watched me do it. Um, you know, working a little bit, but was mostly just taking time off, traveling with my family. I'll never get those years back. Of course, I want to give those years to my kids. And I'm happy to work. You know, once they're a little bit older, I'll go back to work. That's fine. But I want to spend that time with my kids. And I want you to have that too. Also, who's the most, who's the greatest source of entertainment in your life? It's you. You know how to have fun. You know how to make yourself laugh. You are your own greatest joy. And then that joy, the cup runneth over and you emanate that to other people. You're not carrying around a bunch of trauma, mad at people, ruminating on the past. That's all fucking gone. Fuck all that shit. 
You basically are the master of your own domain, the master of your life. You don't allow other people to have free real estate in your brain. You are in control of your own mind. You're in control of your own emotions. You're in control of your own finance. You're in control of your own relationship and dating life. You're in control of your own health. You've got a ton of energy. You're never, ever getting sick, or at least minimally. Um, and you're just looking at other people feeling, honestly, what you're feeling is pity. And you're feeling pity for them because in their early 20s, they didn't make the decisions that they were supposed to make. And as a result, they're living, they're, they're bearing out the consequences of their choices. And you're saying to yourself, you know what? I made the right choices and my life is fucking amazing. And then you actually get to live out the rest of your life just gliding on a cloud, having a lot of fun while everybody else is mad at you, <laughs> okay? So in other words, you leave the camp of the haters and into the hated, okay? Didn't say get rid of your problems, but we'll increase the quality of your problems. In fact, you do have greater problems now. You know what they are? You're afraid that you may not live out the deepest legacy and give the greatest contribution that you have because your life's amazing, but you know that there's more in the tank and you've got to dig deeper, leave that legacy, and figure out what the real point of life actually is. And you're often even left with a lot of um, philosophical questions, unresolved philosophical questions, because you actually have time to think. And you get to actually start to figure out what this life is and take a spiritual path. And in your older age, your golden years, you actually get to really take a deep spiritual path and have some time to reflect on what this life was. It's a beautiful thing. And this is what I want for you. And this is what I want you to view as normal. This is not exceptional. This is normal, okay? I get it that the world is filled with derpers. You're not one of them. You don't need to be pulled down to that standard. I want you to elevate. Now, by the way, we're going to be going deep in this today, and I'm going to be presenting to you the exact skills that you need and the exact path that you need to take. But in the meantime, what I'd love to do is actually coach you in person right in here, www.blueprintreloaded.com. Get in there now. This program is getting, I'm, I'm, it's, it's probably running like 50 hours at this point. I'm going to be loading it up with even more. We're just stacking more and more content in this. This was actually the very best seminar that I ran for about half a decade. I iterated this and ran the seminar. It was actually a very expensive seminar to attend. It was about five grand to attend it in person. And for a very inexpensive price point, you can hop in here and you can actually attend it by watching the videos of it from many different cities that I've included in here. And then what we have is a private group where you get to interact with other people that are doing it. And then you actually get to interact with me and my team live where we will give you personal feedback. So there's so much personal feedback. Interacting with me is just as if you attended, except instead of spending like, you know, thousands in hotels and flights to fly in and, spend, and drop in 5K on it, you wind up spending almost nothing on it. And you just actually get the same engagement with me and you get the same um, group dynamic from your home. And then you just get to keep grinding it out. So it's a beautiful thing. And then you actually have also a video high fidelity recording of it. And you go back to it again and again. The program is stacked with exercises. It's not me ranting. It's incredibly focused. What I like to do here is more infotainment on YouTube. Um, it is for non-serious people who like informative, fun videos. If you're a serious person, you care about your money, you care about your social success, you get right in there. And by the way, the coaching portion of it is going to be pulled very soon, and the coaching is happening now, and you're missing it. So get inside there now. The price is also going to go up. So get inside there right now, okay? We'll see you inside the Blueprint Reloaded, something I spent about a half a decade working on. I've retired the seminar, but I'm releasing it this one last time so that you can actually engage with me and get it done. Okay, so I'll see you inside Blueprint Reloaded. Really excited about it. Um, by the way, to be clear, the amount of iteration on this is insane. This is the best program I've ever done. It's totally, totally insane. The first real program I've released since 2016, and we're here in 2024. So it's, you know, it's about eight years later after Hot Seat. What we created here is unbelievable. Really excited to change your life in here, okay? If you don't get at least double um, the understanding of finance, double the social results, double the happiness after about a month or two of being in here, you've gone through the content, you participate in the group, you've done the coaching, you don't get that, honestly refund the fucking thing. Really, I'm expecting a result of around 10X from you. I expect very, very high standards from you. My expectations of you are sky high. Get inside here. It's a no-brainer. I'm so excited to work with you. Okay, so let's get down to business right now. What I've tried to do here is I've tried to kind of build on you know, the mystery video that I did, which was talking about me in my 20s. And then the last video that I did, which was also talking about, um, you know, the greatest insight that I had in my 20s, which was just to fucking work. And if you remember that video, I said, look, what if you just said, fuck everything, fuck all this distraction, and just put your head down and worked? So I gave the kind of underlying framework in that video. Watch the last one, by the way, if you haven't seen it, it's really good. You don't need, you don't need to watch that to understand this one. Um, so watch that one after if you haven't seen it. But if you've watched that one, this is really just building on it. And so what I want to show you right now is what that life looked like for me in my 20s and how I built this up, okay? So I'm going to sort of show you a sequence of how this all sort of played out. So in my early 20s, like you're aware, I started going out four to seven nights a week. What does that look like? 
let me show you the exact logistics of this. That means that when I was out, I wanted to work on socialists. This is the first thing that we built out all these other things, okay? So, you know, me not getting sick for 12 years, that comes later in the journey. So we'll, we'll cover all this stuff, okay? So I'm sitting there in my early 20s and, you know, I learned from mystery. And what I realized was I've got to be out at least four nights a week. So what that means is a number of different things. Um, it means that you have to black out your room because you're going to be up late. It means that you have to make adjustments as far as your career or your school in order to be able to like sleep in a little bit or you're going to have to catch sleep after work or school. Um, it means that you need to figure out where the best venues are to go out. You, you need to know, okay, Sunday there's this venue, which is harder to find one on a Sunday, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is harder to find venues. Thursday, Friday, Saturday is pretty easy to find venues, but you've got to know where all the best venues are. You've got to figure out where the parties are. You've got to figure out where the social stuff is. Um, you've got to find a way to engage with people that you like. Um, ideally, you find a group of people that you go out with that you enjoy sharing time with them so that when you go out, you can actually debrief your experiences after. And you just make a habit of whenever you see someone that you'd like to meet in the day, you just go engage. Then you have a game plan to go out at nighttime. You go out like freaking crazy. And you aim to do this if you're in your early 20s. It's honestly probably for four or five years. And what's typically going to happen is that you're going to wind up dating different people and getting into relationships. And then what's going to wind up happening is those are going to go sideways. And those are going to go sideways because you've learned to kind of front like you're super cool. Eventually, they figure out that you're not. And it goes sideways, you're depressed. And you got to go back out. And this will kind of happen in like these little spurts, okay? So um, usually for a lot of people, if they suck, um, they'll get their first big one after maybe a couple months. Um, that's if they suck super bad. Obviously, that's not with like a live training, which speeds that up a lot. Um, likewise, you know, within your first year, you should have like a nice handful of successes. Within two years, you should actually have quite a lot of successes, like kind of a little bit obnoxious. And within three or four years, your successes, you can't even remember them all. And, you know, if you're getting into you know, five or ten years, it's just ridiculous. It's just insanity. It's just you are the master of like the result that you want at that point, okay? But you do this specifically because – it's going to show you how to have so many different epiphanies, how to not rely on external validation, how to be funny, how to be socially aware. Um, it, it helps you to understand what other people want and, and how to get into their psychology and so on and so forth. The kind of transformations that you're going to make through this process are so insane, you can't even believe it, okay? So this has to be something that you're working in there, all right? Everybody should do it. Now, another thing that I did, and I'm not a guru of this by any means, but I think that was valuable at that time was also weightlifting. And I made a really, really big effort to lift weights in my 20s. And what I feel like that did was it allowed me to at least have some base level strength. And this wasn't for dating, but this was for me to actually have base level strength. When you're in your 20s, your testosterone is really, really high. I never got super duper great at weightlifting. Um, but what it did for me, um, just smashing the weights uh, properly, was I learned about proper form and technique. And then I was able to lift weights while my testosterone was higher. So I'd recommend that you do that too. I'm certainly not a guru in that, but I actually do enjoy the fact that I'm way, way stronger I'm not like in some crazy shape, I don't have six pack abs or anything, but I've been way, way, I'm just way, way stronger. Okay. So in other words, when I was lifting weights in my early twenties, I could barely, you know, I could probably, you know, curl, uh, you know, a 10 pound or 15 pound dumbbell for eight. And then after a couple years of lifting weights, I could curl, say like, you know, a 35 or even a 45 pound dumbbell and like, you know, do like proper curls on it. Right. It's just basic level strength that you want to get down. Um, I'd recommend that you do that in your twenties as well. So you're lifting some weights and you're going out regularly. Now, from there, and this is the big one, you either have to have some kind of trajectory with the college that you're doing that honestly is going to get you paid. But if you don't, my personal opinion is you've got to learn direct response marketing. So I've mentioned this many, many times. I learned this from John Carlton. I learned it from Dan Kennedy. Okay, contemporary guys are like Alex Ramosi. I can, I can hammer this drum over and over and over and over. But if you're not learning direct response marketing, but covered extensively in Blueprint Reloaded, by the way, to be very, very clear, it's like, all through here, okay? And I've got my own ideas on this and in the foundation of what I learned from them. Um, and you'll learn a ton about direct response marketing in there. In fact, because you know me and you know my frameworks, you might even learn more about it by learning about it in there. But I recommend that you both learn from me, but you also learn about the people who I learn from, who I give respect to. And from that standpoint, what I honestly think is that anybody who doesn't understand direct response marketing, social skills, how to get stronger, they're basically completely fucking lost. So the way that I learned direct response marketing was I eventually moved to Hawaii and I got an apartment in front of the ocean. And um, I actually have a video. If you look this up, it's uh, when you don't compete, you win. When you don't compete, you win. And I actually opened it right on the front of me um, in Hawaii. So if you look me up, um, look up my name, of course. Um, but when you don't compete, you win. And um, I'll show you actually where I moved to. But what I did was I wound up just rent. Yeah, there it is right there. Um, give me one second to lead into it. Press pause. Um, but what happened was I, uh, and you'll, you'll have to skip the little cute little intro there because I want to just start it when I'm talking. But 
basically, um, I moved into an apartment right in front of the ocean, and I would just sit there and work on direct response copywriting all day and then go out at night. So if you could let that rip, you'll see me kind of introduce the video here, um, and you can get a sense of where I lived and how I learned direct response copywriting right in a cool place in front of the ocean, okay? Uh, let that rip if you can, and let's hop is the competitive versus collaborative frame. It is the lesson between being the small, isolated little island that has to compete against foreign enemies versus becoming one with the world around you Jump ahead and merging bit. into it. A touch, now, a touch. as I sit here, I'm sitting in front of an oh, apartment where I lived for three or four years. It's this apartment right back there. It's here in Waikiki, Hawaii. And if you look at it, it's pretty awesome. I just had to share. Basically, you've got the balcony where the bed is sitting there behind a metal wall. And what you can do is you can actually retract the metal wall and you're sitting on the balcony. So in this place that we're sitting here shooting this, I had this epiphany because what happened to me was all through my teenage years and my early 20s, I was trying to build a great life. And I worked and I worked and I worked. I built a brand. I was known as a dating Perfect. teacher. And I so I just wanted to, you know, in showing that to you, my goal was basically just to show you where it was that I moved to. So I lived in a couple of different apartments there, third floor, 12th floor, whatever. Um, but I worked there specifically because I wanted a place with a nice view where I could just go outside and do a little bit of swimming and offensive. I think I was paying about 2,300 bucks a month to live there. It was in 2006. It wasn't terrible. Um, you know, that might be like 5k a month now. So if you can just sustain some kind of basic level income, go move somewhere, maybe near a ski resort, maybe, uh, you know, in front of the ocean, but move somewhere that you like, or just live with your parents, do whatever you got to do, but do that and study direct response marketing. Why is it so important that you study direct response marketing? Dan Kennedy has a great quote where he says, I'm not in the business of selling flowers. I'm not in the business of selling computers. I'm not in the business of selling tractors. I'm in the business of making motherfucking money, okay? And what that means is that once you understand direct response marketing, you can make money doing anything. Look, as a hobby, okay, literally as just a personal hobby, I will close five or 10K sales while I'm waiting for Ubers. You know, so you see people financially struggling and they have no they have no understanding of direct response marketing. I'm like, man, your life must suck. And I'm just waiting for an Uber. I'm like, ah, let's see if there's anybody around here I can financially pre-qualify. Okay, I can see they have a little bit of cash by looking at them. Go up, use social skills, start a conversation, let it slip a little bit about what you teach. Bam, direct response marketing. And basically, as soon as you go into that, they're just hit with a tsunami and they're just like, I gotta join up. And you'll, you'll see within seven, eight minutes, like I'm trying to do it before the Uber gets there because I don't wanna miss my Uber. I'm trying to get about a five to 10K transaction before the Uber even arrives. And it's this weird thing where like, I can tell you this again and again and again, and yet you sit there like a fucking dumbass, not learning direct response marketing. I'm like, I'm like, why do you want your life to look like this? Like within the paradigm and circles of people that know direct response marketing, internet marketing, they look at everybody else who doesn't know this as retarded. And I mean, same thing with social skills, by the way. You know, you see these guys like getting divorced by their wives and fucking chaos is happening and they're lonely and the, all the, uh, it's disgusting, right? The, you know, I mean, you, you see them there with like someone who's like completely not anyone to write home about at all, just obsessing over them, losing out their money to them. I mean, it's crazy, you know, right? And, and not having the kind of dating life they want. And Again, like you see people that don't have that and you're like, why are you so dumb? Like, why don't you just go out and learn this? Like, what's your problem? Like, what is wrong with you? What's your problem that you're not actively learning this? And, and then sitting there crying over this and that and the other thing. Well, in the same way, when you don't understand direct response marketing, what I would say to you is like, just think about all the stress that money causes you. This ongoing stress like, oh, I can't buy this or I wanna go do this and I can't get it. Like even, again, Blueprint Reloaded, like, it's probably, I mean, this thing is cheap. It's like inexpensive, I'd be a better word for it. But like, probably some people are like, oh, I can't even get that right now. You know, it's like knowing that you're missing an awesome coaching and how that affects your life, right? You know, I remember one time I was in Charlotte and it was, uh, it was a seminar that I was at and a guy came up to me and it was like this really, really cheap thing that he wanted to get. And then he just decided he didn't have the money for it. I just started laughing uncontrollably. I didn't mean to be mean. And I, and I was like, that it was funny because it's like I'm in Charlotte. Like, when am I in Charlotte? You know what I mean, right? And so I'm sitting there and I'm like laughing. I'm like, man, that's so crazy. It's like the thing that you need to break out of this is right here in Charlotte. But you're in such a life situation that you can't even get it. And then now your life's going to be just completely fucked. And uh, I pitied him. You know, I was like, you, you've, you've let it get to this point that even an opportunity in front of you, you're not able to jump on it. And... I, I felt genuine pity. I just, I just remember feeling that, like the, the utter pity. And when you think about the money thing, it's like, I mean, 
health treatments that you can't get, things that you can't get for your kids. Um, you know, like I'm about to take my kids skiing, um, you know, for, for a week in Salt Lake City. And we, we're going to go out to Alta and Snowbird and Brighton and Deer Valley and Park City and all this kind of stuff. It's like, that should be normal. Like, do you really not want to take your kids skiing? You don't. You want to not take your kids to Alaska? You want your kids not to go to Hawaii? You want your kids to to not be able to eat organic food? I mean, this stuff racks up. You know, you want to not be able to take good herbs and do different health treatments to keep your health good? Like, you're just going to let this happen. Like, this is just okay. Like, That's okay, bro. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what reality are you in? That doesn't even make any sense. So I'll tell people, like, learn direct response marketing because you're, no matter – I don't care if you run a mega corporation. You're going to need to know this stuff. But people just don't learn it. They just don't want to learn it. Just, oh, just don't learn it. Like, that's cool. Just uh, all good. Just, like, let your life turn into, like, complete fucking garbage and trash and have everything fucking suck. And, like, that's okay. Like, everything just sucks. And, like, that's cool. Like, yeah, bro. Yeah. Just, like, let's just have everything suck. That's life when you don't know marketing. That's your life. You know, just your life. Nothing big, right? Just your life. Just your fucking life, you know? So then you're just going to sit there fapping yourself to sleep in a fucking pigsty while your kids starve. Rock on, bro. Um, learn direct response marketing. You have to do it. So what did I do? Here's how I did it. Um, I was in my early 20s, and I go out to Hawaii. But I would have learned this at home. I would learn this anyway. Don't look, oh, I can't do it if I can't go to Hawaii. Do it anyway. And I would just sit there studying sales copy. I would study guys like Evan Pagan. Um, muscle tech, muscle and fitness magazine, other good articles. And here's the main key. I, I think this is the main key to my whole success. I'm in it to win it. I feel like most people are in it to say that they tried. I'm in it to win it for real. Here's what I mean, okay? Side tangent to explain the in it to win it thing. If somebody tells me that they're trying to get a date, I can see immediately if they're serious or not based on whether or not they have a condom in their pocket based on whether or not their room is clean back at their crib, based on whether or not they have like something like stupid ass lights like this or like a pink Himalayan sea salt lamp or whatever to where, you know, if, if you actually had a successful day, you'd have somewhere back to go and it's not fluorescent fucking lights with weird vibes. I know that you're like, like for example, if I'm here at my crib and I go out, I'm expecting to have a great time. I'm expecting to meet some great people and bring them back. So, you know, we got the lights running, um, the house is clean. The air is good. Um, there's music playing on the speakers. Like, we leave with the music playing on the speakers with the assumption people are going to come back. We got a movie screen up here. And, you know, we, uh, we leave, we leave like, a, like some kind of cool visual running on the movie screen. Like, it would be weird not to meet somebody and have them come back. That would be unusual. When you're in it to succeed, how would that not happen? So knowing that, you're prepared. You can see they're serious, right? Like, if you have a social media, do you have your photos done properly? Things like that. So when someone's like, oh, I want to get a date, it's like, I know you're lying because you don't have those things done. Like, like you obviously don't. I'll, I'll run whole seminars where I say, you know, people are like, oh, you changed my life. Like, I've been studying you for years. I'm like, cool. Show me your social media. It looks like, oh, it sucks. <laughs> What's your crib like? Oh, it sucks. It's like, how did I change your life, bro? Like, just, you just, is this, is this entertainment for you? Like, I don't understand what you're talking about. Like, you just find it comforting that um, at some point when you decided to change, you'd have a general direction that's like comforting to you. It's like, a, it's like, this is all just like one big cope. Like this whole thing that we're doing here is just a giant cope. Is that where we're going? Are we serious about it? So, you know, it's like, I see people and they, they say, oh, I learned so much from you. I say, cool, start a conversation with them over there and I'll come jump in in a minute. And they go, oh, I don't know how to do that. I'm like, well, then what are you doing? Like, again, www.blueprintreloaded.com. Like, are you serious? You want to know one of the reasons why people don't go fix their social media, fix their crib back at home. Get better at communicating. Learn how to talk and talk. Build some um, confidence because they don't have a group. They don't have accountability. Get inside here to get actual accountability. Click this link below. Get some fucking accountability. People that will hold you responsible and get this shit fucking done. Raise your standards. Get inside here, okay? People that only watch YouTube, they're non-serious. And that's fine. It's fine to be like fun, but just your life, you know? Just your life. So maybe get serious about it. So what my life would have looked like at that time was a combination of um, again, never got anything to write home about in the gym, but I want to build my strength. So I was always in the gym. And what I would do is I would basically just do the gym in the day. And then I would be out at night. And then during the rest of the day, I was mostly just learning about direct response sales copywriting. And so I did my first launch, my first major launch in, uh, it was probably 2005, a program called Foundations. And that did a couple hundred grand. And then we did another one called Transformations that did another couple hundred grand. And then we did Blueprint Decode and that did 2 million. And that was through the effort of creating 
um, basically creating sustained launches. Now, if you think about it, what was it that I was doing? I'm going out at night and I'm doing a huge amount of coaching and I'm leaning into the coaching. Like I'm in it to win it. I'm in it to be a better coach. What's that mean? Um, maybe not the best hours to run. I'm not sure if you should model this. Probably in retrospect was unhealthy, but shows my mental attitude was I would be up coaching until um, way late, right? You know, my buddy Sam is here. Sam, I can I can ask you from back, in the, back when we used to coach together back in the day. Um, did I ever end a training at 2 a.m.? Never. Here, pop in, the, pop in the shot here for a second. Never. You ever see me end a, tra a training at the, what's my average time that I would have ended a training at? Well, Sam and I will do a video coming up. I think it started at 2 a.m., didn't it? <laughs> it never, never ended at 2 a.m. Yeah, what's the average time that we ended at, would you guess? Uh, six, seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah what's, the, what, what's some of the really late ones we would have run? Uh, we wouldn't sleep and go to the next day. Yeah, we just keep training. Yeah. That's normal. <laughs> just keep training. Okay, put in the comments if you want Sam to be in a video. We'll bring him back on. We'll do a video together, okay? So, yeah, why and why would we be training all the time? Because um, we, we would train that hardcore for the simple reason that we want to get better. That's it. We, there was no need. We'd fulfilled the program obligations that were expected by the students by 2 a.m. Why do we keep going? We're riffing. We're practicing. We're leading into it. We want, we want to be out. We want to be good at this stuff. So when I'm going out, what I'm doing is I'm trying to sharpen the sword by putting in the fucking hours, okay? In other words, this is what George Leonard would call the 10,000 hours to mastery. Some people have different theories about mastery and the timeline it takes. I would just say, once you pick a direction, put in your 10,000 hours to mastery. But notice here that I didn't just pull some starving artist bullshit where I say, oh, I've, done a t I've got a 10,000 hour, my, I mean, my current skills is probably 30,000. But you know, at the time, I've got a 10,000 hour skill and I'm gonna be a starving fucking artist. No, listen, you know this whole build it and they will come bullshit from the movie Field of Dreams? That ain't you. Okay, see if you can load it, build it and they will come Field of Dreams, okay? This is, they call it build it and they will come mentality from, the, from Field of Dreams. Like, if you just get good, they'll come to you. That's like you think you become a doctor, you're gonna get all these like women into you and so on and so forth. But see if you can get the, if you build it, they will come, not the preview of Field of Dreams. Um, so you'd go back and then the next one down. There you go. Build, oh, that one's long too. We'll see if there's like a short version of it. Yeah, there it is, there it is. Yeah, there you go. Play. If you build it, you will come. Yeah, so, that ain't you. That ain't fucking you. If you build it, they're not coming, bro. They ain't coming. Do you know how many guys I know amazing at the same things that I'm amazing at? You've never heard of them. Having never heard of them. It's not if you build it, they will come. There is excellent word of mouth once you have a network and you could definitely get sales from word of mouth, for sure, absolutely. But. It's not if you build it, they will come, okay? It, when you learn direct response marketing, they fucking come. You learn fucking social media, they fucking come, okay? Like, oh, build it, and they will come. It's like these dumbasses, like, oh, I became a doctor. Now I'm gonna get all the girls. I became a lawyer. Now I'm gonna get all the girls. Now I got six pack abs. I'm gonna get all the girls. Shut the fuck up. Fuck you. That's you being a lazy ass bitch that doesn't wanna learn marketing, okay? Oh, you don't wanna spend a couple years learning about marketing? Wah, wah. Oh, poor baby. Normal people, like, say somebody becomes a doctor or a lawyer. They spend 10 years in school, whatever the fuck it is, so they can make half a million dollars a year, and you can't spend two, three years to start making a couple million a year because you're a fucking crybaby? Because you have every fucking excuse? What the fuck are you doing with your life? It, it makes me sick when people won't learn marketing. It makes me sick when people won't learn social skills. What the fuck is wrong with you? Okay, and like a lot of these guys, like again, by the time they hit their 30s, oh, I don't have time for that. Oh, I'm too cool. I've, I've got a degree. I've got a degree, I've got this, I've got that. Yeah, well, cool, bro. What's your life look like? Where's the fucking results? Still these motherfuckers that can't even get their fucking room cleaned or get a proper social media. They can't figure it out. So what I'd say to you is, it's not if, if you build it, they will come. Don't be a starving fucking artist, okay? What you do is you, you, you just gotta fucking crank out the 10,000 hours to the best skill set, okay? By the way, oh, well, how do I know what to pick? I don't care. 
I don't fucking care. This whole thing like, well, how do I know what to pick? There is no thing to pick. It's never coming. Find your passion. There is no passion. It's never fucking coming. It's never going to come, bro. You pick something pretty good, and then you make it your passion. <sighs> you know, it's not, it's not going to tickle you, okay? You pick something pretty good, and then what you put into it is what you get out of it. You'll get these euphoric flow states from it if you put in the effort, okay? Here's what you do. In your 20s, try a bunch of shit. Try it, try it, try it, try it, try it, try it, try it. Try a bunch of shit. Quick, 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 quick. Chop, fucking chop, fucker. Chop, fucking chop. Try it quick. Oh, I'm like doing this, doing that. Like you don't have time for this shit, okay? Try a bunch of shit fast. See where you see where you find a lane, and then and then fuck everything else. Because everybody who doesn't pick a lane, you are going to mow their fucking lawn. You're gonna eat their food. You're gonna ransack their metaphorical village. You are gonna dominate because while they're sitting there going, "Oh, I figured it out." Yeah, cool, bro. Well, guess what? One year ahead of you, two year ahead of you, three year ahead of you, four year ahead of you, five year ahead of you, six year ahead of you, seven year ahead of you, eight year ahead of you, nine year ahead of you, ten year. How long you let, let the cycle go? Somebody's beating your fucking ass. It's like compounding, like picking your your path to mastery early is like is like a compounding interest in the bank. Where if you put like you know, hundred bucks in the bank when you're like a kid, and then you're like a gazillionaire by the time you're older because it's uh, compounding interest. That's probably bullshit. But that's the general idea of compounding interest. Okay, it's the same thing with skill set. Okay, it's it's. The money comes when you become the shit with your skill set. That's where the real pay comes when you combine that with marketing and social media. And so what happens is, is, you're, is you're getting behind in some capacity. So you got to make a choice to say, you know what, like I'm, I'm locking in and, and I'm getting this done. That means that for me, what did that mean? That meant that I was used to spending very, very long hours studying marketing, um, product creation, I'm learning everything about my industry, constantly learning, constantly growing, making so many mistakes that if I had to do it again, I think I'd blow my fucking brains out joking, but like making so many mistakes, having so many problems, making just so much misjudgment and misevaluation. You got, and, and it really what this comes down to is you got to read a ton of books, read, 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 read. You got to have hours a day to read. Um, there's, there's like, like a hundred basic self-help books that everybody's got to read. And really, you probably got to read a couple thousand of them. And you're just, you know, in business books and this and that and everything. So, you, you know, you, and you attend a ton of courses. So you're attending courses, you're reading books, you're, you're taking it serious. You're a serious person about it. Okay. And particularly if you're not going to go to college, like I see all these people, like they, they're like, I realized that college is a scam. Oh, I'm not going to college. Like college is, is, has actually some merit and I wouldn't entirely call it a scam. Um, if you're going to really pick your own path and go like 10 out of 10, like balls to the wall, crazy psycho on it, then it's a scam because you probably could have made more going crazy as psycho on your career. But anything like the second that you're not going to some kind of grad school or like a high level in college that has a career path, that means you go crazy psycho on whatever career path you have. And you learn a ton about marketing, ton about social media, ton about social skills, ton about communication, read, 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 work, 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 work. Like you got to take that serious. Like it's your PhD. Okay. If you're not going to do a PhD, you're not going to go to grad school of some kind, then you should be working as hard within your field as you would be if you're in some kind of formal education. You got to be creating your own formal education. Really, you, you, you can probably learn at an excess rate to college or graduate degrees. I think I did if you actually take it seriously, you're a serious person about it, but not if you're a non-serious person. So, and, and, and you gotta understand, if you're not a serious person about this, it's gonna fuck you, okay? Like, you wanna be able to grow some stupid ass giant beard and wear, wear a bling watch as a 44 year old and have stupid ass pink lights up here at a mansion in Hollywood Hills while your friend listens to you and just talk a bunch of shit and just like be like a half rapper, self-help guy, make no fucking sense at all and get paid to do it and just do whatever the fuck you want. AKA a non-serious person. I'm like the least serious person you've ever seen. Well, then guess what? You got to be a very, very serious person in your 20s. And also you got to enjoy the fucking thing because it's your 20s. You can't just fucking not enjoy it. So you got to be serious about having fun whenever you got a little bit of time off. Okay? So it's, it's basically, it's like this whole entire thing, okay, that you got to go through. Um, but realize that if you're, again, if you don't have some kind of direct career path leading you somewhere um, and you're on your own thing, like, like, tick, 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 like, Tick, tick, motherfucker. <laughs> get at it, okay? And have as much fun as you can in the process, too. Um, but get at it, okay? So basically what it should be, again, what should it be looking like? You have some kind of base level thing to sustain yourself. I did, really, what you should probably do is like find a bunch of other young hustlers, move in with them like a little clan, and then try to minimize drama. Like, don't need all this bullshit drama, okay? Little clan, 
And then what you do is you have enough to sustain yourself, live on the cheap. Okay, I lived on floors, closets, like in the book, The Game. I would live in a walk-in closet. Walk-in closet is a sick-ass script. But I lived in walk-in. I lived on floors, couches, walk-in closets. Again, why do you think 35-year-olds can't do this? They can't handle it. Oh, I can't do that. You know, but when you're 20, you can. You don't care because you have no dignity. No dignity, good, good in some cases, okay, in certain cases like this, such as sleeping on a couch when you need to, okay? Um, now, from there, as you're building this out, here's another thing I'd recommend to you. I'd also say that you should probably travel and go see the world a little bit because you're in a bubble and it kills your creativity. But what I would recommend that you do is like, funny enough, I'd even pull vault off me to do this if I'm being honest with you. Get inside this program here, www.blueprintreloaded. Talk to people in here who wanna do a little bit of couch surfing. You can build a network right inside of this program and see other like-minded hustlers, meet other people like that. Again, little hustler clan, great place to find people would be right in here. Look, you've, like, and again, be happy the fact this is a couple bucks. Why? Screening out the riffraff. Means all the non-serious people are screened the fuck out and people that want to build something are right inside here, right inside the group. And we're going to build this even bigger. So get rolling in there. You can find great people in there. But generally speaking, um, I basically use the community when I was younger to do a lot of couch surfing. It was like a couch surfing network. So I was basically able to, um, you know, just fly around for maybe a couple hundred bucks for a flight ticket. Basically macaroni and cheese kind of vibes gifts are the kind of kind of vibes to eat and then basically just go to different cities and learn and go out in them okay so try to get a bunch of like national parks in couch surfing in major cities go see the world do some traveling in europe you got to figure out how to do this that makes you a little bit worldly that means that you've partied and have some fun sober party by the way alcohol and drugs my god you have so many things against you that's called an unforced error of the millennium drugs and booze unforced error of the millennium you're gonna need you're gonna need all this and more to get where, where you want to go and you're gonna start working against yourself imagine how happy your competitors are that you're drunk and high like bravo every competitor get drunk and high Woo! get waste a bunch of time on drama get an irritating significant other get drunk get high be weird. Look at TikTok. It's like, just keep destroying yourself. Never interrupt your enemy while they're killing themselves, right? Look, in truth, I actually don't believe in competition. I love my competitors because I don't view them as competitors. That's a whole other video. But from a framework of looking at it, I would say don't create unforced errors by frying your fucking brain, okay? That would be another one. So as you're doing this, let's look at your life. You wake up, smash the gym, learn about some fitness stuff so you've got a little bit of strength that you built in your 20s. Like any strength I have, I built that in my 20s. Then what you do is you um, are, are basically learning about direct response marketing in the day. How do you do that? You're a serious person. Same way that I said that you, uh, you know, if I know that you're serious about dating, you know, you'd have a cool crib to go back to. You have like a social media. You're taking other direct response ads and you're typing them out by rote. Okay, this is a key piece of this video. Key, 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 key piece of this video right here. If you're serious, if you're actually serious, you're taking other people's sales ads and you're typing them out by road. Then what you're doing is that you're, you're looking at um, the uh, teachers who teach marketing and then you're seeing the frameworks that they're teaching, but you're only gonna memorize it when you type it out. Then what you're doing is you're getting in front of a camera. You could even use your phone for this. Phones have great cameras these days, better than I had. And you're gonna get used to talking into the camera, doing sales ad kind of content, okay? And in the process of doing this, you're, you're learning to get comfortable in front of a camera. You're learning to uh, you know learn sales ads and then you're also working on your main craft, which means that you can create content out of it. And so you're kind of doing all this sort of stuff. And now all of a sudden, you're building a path, you're, you're on a path to mastery, getting some incredible skills and adding value to other people. You're able to actually create um, social media marketing out of it, maybe even cold traffic marketing out of it, maybe organic traffic marketing out of it. Um, and then what you're doing is you're, uh, um, you're, you're, you're also, you're able to sell it because you understand marketing and another big one too is you have to get past your sales resistance, okay? You're gonna have a lot of internal sales resistance and you're gonna feel weird about making sales. And what's gonna happen is when you're younger, all your friends are gonna be weird about you having a better dating life. All your friends are gonna be weird about you making sales and banking it and making money. And you've gotta get past all of that, okay? Um, you just, you, you have to get past it. Like one of the reasons why like a lot of young men might just go buy like a simple seven or $10,000 Rolex watch as an example is to kind of like, it's just kind of like a dumb thing because it's really just a stainless steel watch. Um, but a, a reason a lot of young men will buy that is actually to create a mental separation from their old identity. Like, no, I'm this new identity now. And sometimes even just like that 10K watch is actually like a thing that they can look at and they can say, no, like I'm in a new identity now and it's something that is like a sign of what it is that I built. Cool thing with a Rolex watch, you can resell it. 
okay, I'm, I can't guarantee the future of the market, but typically the way it stands now, they actually often gain value. You can just resell the fucking thing. So this is like a little investment you put on your wrist, 10 grand is really not that much if you know marketing. And then what happens is it kind of reminds you that you're at the next level. And maybe you get catch like a 50 or 100 grand watch as you get a little bit further down the path. You get a million dollar one when you got like a gazillion dollars. You know, it's like little little marker, little kind of like um, moments in time that, that men will have particularly because men like watches, women have their own stuff. And it just kind of reminds you like, okay, so like I made this and of course I could just resell it or I can give it to my kids. Just little stuff like that, right? Guys do that with watches, kind of stupid, but kind of a thing. So then from there, you're now making this new identity and you know, you're, you're getting more fit. Again, you don't need that for dating. You just do it for yourself to have some strength. Um, you're, you're crushing it socially. You're having your first few different, uh, you know, dating experiences, significant others, stuff like that. You're having some fun with it. You're kind of seeing what's out there. You're getting better socially through that whole process, which is going to help you in social media. You're building out a social media following. Um, and, you, and you're just continually expanding on your craft. You, maybe you're reading books by people like Seth Godin, learning about how to build tribes, learning about how to build a purple cow. And, you know, you're reading all this stuff about psychology. Um, and then from there, what happens <clears throat> is you start to hit into your um, mid-20s and maybe heading towards your late 20s. And you've slayed your first few dragons now, okay? And then what's going to happen, and this happens to just about everybody, is you're going to have a health crisis. So from age um, from age uh, 26 to like 30 for me, I was in this constant like health problem where I was basically getting sick like 10 times a year. And you just hit this point where you're like, man, I can't function like this. Like this sucks. I can't be sick all the time. Like I don't have time for this shit. So then what happens is you wind up reading about 200 books on health. Like it's probably a couple hundred books. How does this play out? Do you sit there reading them straight through? No. You might read your first book on health. Then you read your second book on health. You read your third book on health. And you know, what I used to do is there was like a Barnes & Noble. It's an old school bookstore. Barnes & Noble, like say at the Grove here in LA, or there's a Barnes & Noble in Hawaii, and you know, or chapters in Canada. At the time, I don't know if that's still there. Um, but what I would do is like maybe every Saturday afternoon, I would just go there and I would just grab, I would, I would grab like one marketing book, um, you know, one book about health and maybe one book about like spiritual growth or something. And I just sit there and kind of read through them. And then if I happen to catch one I like, I would read it. And I would kind of do like a couple hours of reading every morning, just like out on the balcony. It's beautiful. So, you know, so you're, you're kind of going through that and, you, and you're reading this stuff and you start to get your health on track. And all of a sudden what happens, you're like, oh damn, this is cool. The energy of my early twenties is coming back and I'm not getting sick anymore. And again, I'm not giving medical advice. I'm just giving anecdotal evidence. Um, or anecdotal, an, an anecdote of what it was that I personally experienced. I never did a split, split double split test study, study um, but I have personally not been sick since 2012. So I kind of started getting sick a little bit less, and then it just stopped. So you know, so I went from being sick like 10 times a year, and then it just stopped. So um, that was important, right? Um, but what also happens is that you have a spiritual crisis because you start making all this money, and you start dating all these people, and you, you start to realize like this is really, really important as a part of my adulthood, but like, it's kind of fucking dumb. Like, man, I'm like working, 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 like all this stuff. And I just feel the exact same. I, you know, I literally feel the exact same. There is no difference. In fact, if you reload that Hawaii video, the, if you can't, uh, uh, when you stop competing, you win, just reload that as quickly as you can, please. You know, so yeah, there it is. But you'll, you'll actually see me talking about it here, right? I actually went back. Uh, let that play maybe minute four. I'm, I'm, excuse me if I kind of zoom around the video a little bit, guys. Maybe put it like minute three. Um, but let it play from, say, minute three, please. Three, three, please. Minute three, please. Uh, no, minute three. Yeah, you're at minute one right now. So go to minute three. Not minute one, but minute three. You're at minute one. We'll go to minute three. Minute three. We're still at minute one. You just got to find the, th are you, you don't have your glasses on? Oh, is the internet down? No, it's uh, one minute and four seconds. Just go to minute three. Oh, minute three seconds. There you go. <laughs> All right, let's roll. <laughs> there you go, it's late. <laughs> What's going on, bro? <laughs> okay, what's he doing? Okay, so let's go. This is why we need those supplements. Mm -hmm. Let's let it rip. Putting in, All looking right. at my apartment, and I can feel the ease of my body. body. And I, and I, and I, I myself as I'm bodyboarding in. I'm bodyboarding on a wave in Hawaii. I have money. I have a great girlfriend. We have, all, we hook up on the balcony every night. I eat at five star dinners. I go hiking. Why do I feel the same? I'm going crazy. And funny enough, Eckhart Tolle wrote a book called The Power of Now. And he says that there's two things in life that make you miserable. One is not getting what you want, but the other is actually funny enough. Can you, can you guess it? 
it's getting what you want. Because when you don't have what you want, you always think, well, maybe someday it could be better. But when you get what you want, and you realize you don't feel any different, it's almost like you have no hope. So I started feeling at one point like, I don't even know if I have any hope to feel better. It made me feel insane. So what wound up happening was that pressure that was in me kept building and building and building. And it was like a vice grip. Because my life was amazing, but there were things going on in my life at that point too, where I was getting negative media, and I wasn't being represented in a way that I thought was fair, what I really do. And it was driving me crazy, because my life's great, everything's perfect, but I'm not getting the approval I want. And maybe if I could just get the approval that I want, finally I could feel good. Maybe that's what would fix it. And as that pressure kept building and building and building, I had this really wild experience, which if you look it up in spiritual growth, you can Google this, it's called a Satori experience. And I'm embarrassed to say this, whenever I say a Satori experience, uh, it's very self-indulgent, like, I had a Satori experience. And you know who did it? You didn't! So listen to me! And that's not something, that's not a frame I'm trying to come from, but it is my story and it was how I experienced it. So I want to share it with you so you can learn something, maybe you find it interesting. So basically what happened was I was so trapped in my head and miserable, and all of a sudden for three or four days, the inner dialogue just shut off. And I was present to the moment. I could, I could feel the environment. I could look at people and feel their insecurity, feel their pain, and I would look at them and just think, it's all gonna be okay. We're all one. And it wasn't even a thought. It was actually an awareness that I had. It was, it was very angelic and surreal. And funny enough, after four days or so of that, I went into this negative spiral. I got sick. I felt miserable. It was like demons were coming at me. It was kind of like, I, what goes up must come down. But what I learned in that moment, that it was almost like a psychedelic experience, was that by a way of looking at it, at it, we are all one. But of course, that's weird because we are in a competitive reality. Everybody, you know, the fish are eating each other and animals are eating each other and businesses are competing and we compete for mates. Very real. I mean, we live in, in the most, by a way of looking at it, the most hyper-competitive dog-eat-dog -dog world we could live in. But then there's almost this other paradigm, energetically, where we all come from source and we will all return to source. and. Again, this is very abstract, and we're going to explain it in this video, so just bear with me. Even if, even if you're sitting here going, okay, come on, man, whatever, I get it. I would have thought the same thing, so please bear with me and at least give it a chance to hit home, and if it doesn't, maybe plant a seed for later, or maybe it doesn't matter. We'll do another video for you, okay, about how to grind it out. We'll like that, too. But really what we have is a situation in life where there's a physical world that's very, very competitive, but there's also an energetic world that we can draw from where it's collaborative. And funny enough, in, in the competitive world, we make things hard, we make them difficult, and we come up with tactics and methods to deal with that difficulty, which is actually very cool. I, I love that stuff, I love talking about it. But there's also an energetic world where things can be easy, where we can come from a different paradigm, where we require less effort, we don't need to do as much. And that was that Satori experience that I had, again, here in Hawaii, life so perfect, life amazing, like, you know, I mean, maybe you don't think it's that cool, but for me, it was like, the coolest thing. Thought I had what I wanted, and getting miserable, and then snapping out of it, and joining into that oneness, into that collaborative frame, and these weird epiphanies that I had as I kind of went to the other side, I wanna bring them back here to you, and the practical side, as far as your dating life, socializing, networking, making friends, is that you could be so effective. There will be so much vitality and power coming through you. Amazing. Thinking of Thank the right so thing much. to say, or... Appreciate it, my man. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> What happened there, by the way? Oh, well, you know, I could add better communication there. Okay, so anyway, okay, so um, I'm just like, I'm like loosening. So okay, so basically, minute three, minute three. Okay, so all right, we're going, we're going on a ski trip. I'm taking him skiing tomorrow. So anyway, so point being was what I was what I was talking about in there. If you saw it, was um you're you're competing and grinding and it's scary okay this stuff is scary it's shit ass fucking scary because i mean i could tell you all these different stories uh, you know about the financial debt and the fucking risks that we are taking and stuff like that and i get into that if you want but the point being is that it's fucking terrifying and so you get in this mode where you're just like yap, 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 ah, rah, rah. like it's like you got to take on the world right and you just get so hyper aggressive and so hyper go-getter that what happens is that you're just in a super competitive state, right? Like you're, you're looking, you know, you're young, you're in your 20s, you're just looking at everybody who's doing better than you and you're like, fucking, fucking, fuck, you know, right? Like you're just fucking fighting this out. And you start just getting sick and it starts turning you fucking weird as hell and that's even coming from me. Like it, just, it turns you into this like 
angry, over competitive, but not in a healthy way. Um, you know, it's too much of a good thing. Com 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 being highly competitive is a good thing, but it's too much of a good thing. Um, and you're just, uh, you're, you're sick, you're angry, you're tense, you're, you're, you're putting people off, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you're just unhappy. And then you start winning and you're like, I thought this was going to make me happy. But what that's really signaling to you is it's time to change fuels. And that is when you enter the world of Eckhart Tolle and the power of now. And you learn to draw energy from being present. And you learn that simply because without doing that, you're going to go insane. You will go crazy. Your friends who have regular jobs won't. The 35-year-old who has too much dignity to do things like this won't. But you will. You will go fucking nuts. And I had anger and pissed offness to me that was so insane because, you know, I'm, I'm 90 grand deep into this campaign that we're doing and I got to get the money back or I'm fucking fucked. Fucked. Okay. And it's like, you know, it's, and you got to get it right. And then you're just, you know, you're fucking crazy, right? Blueprint decoded, uh, you know, four or five years creating it. Everybody telling me that I should just get it out earlier, but me sticking to my guns and sticking to my vision, like I did with this program right here, by the way, Blue Perilla did the same thing. Everybody giving me shit to get out earlier and, you know, sticking to my guns, sticking to my vision. Uh, you know, people saying, oh, put it out in chunks then, or, you know, just get this thing out. You're too deep into this. And I'm like, no, like I'm going to nail this. Trust me, it's going to be worth the wait. Um, you know, and, and building that thing out, 100 grand to shoot it, uh, of, you know, uh, another... Uh, a huge amount of money to print the DVDs of it and do the design work around it. And I, I wrote my own sales ad. I don't know if this fucking thing is going to sell. And I made my first $2 million, you know, but you could imagine sitting there, you know, you know, six figure debts and, uh, you know, risk in years of your life and just praying that people will be, will be receptive to this. I have a, such a better understanding now of what people are responsive to. And I have a better understanding of business now. And it'd be a lot easier. Now I, I could, I could create a program as good as blueprint decoded now in about two, three weeks. But at the time, uh, you know, those were all new skills to me. It was it was new skills to build that product that I had to push into my edge, new understandings that I had to figure out. Um, it was uh, piles, you know, you know, putting my marketing skills to the test, and um, you know, putting my ability to build an um, audience to the test, and so on and so forth. Uh, and it's it's scary, you know. And yeah, you're, you're you start getting sick a lot. I actually fainted the night before the release of Blueprint, um, and I, I was super sick because of the stress that I was under. Um, but I also didn't understand things about vi like vitamin D3 and zinc and all sorts of stuff I didn't know at that time. Um, so yeah, you do hit a point where you're just super angry and you're sick all the time and you put on a lot of weight and all that kind of stuff. And you know, the only actual answer to it is that you're probably going to have to learn about food. You're going to have to learn about nutrition. You're going to have to learn about imu your immune health. And you're probably going to have to learn about spiritual health. And um, without that, you're not going to make it through. And it, what's, what's frankly worse is that you know, some people even do make it through without spiritual health, and then they become like narcissistic fucking dickheads. You know, you wonder how things like 2020 happen. It's like a lot of people like that that did make it through, and they're just fucking power hungry, fucking crazy. So, you know, in a lot of the system that we have. So, you know, at, 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 at best, you become one of those fuckers, and then at worst, you just wind up imploding. So you are going to have to have some kind of a sense of spiritual health, which means you're probably going to have to learn how to meditate. You might remember the first videos that I put out back in the day about meditation, what it was that I was learning. You're going to have to learn how to meditate. Um, you're going to have to learn how you know things like trauma release, because otherwise you're going to keep you're going to keep gravitating to people, places, and things that will repeat that trauma. And you're going to have to learn all that kind of stuff. Uh, and also, you're going to have to learn how to deepen your sense of presence. But what this is all going to do is going to allow you to make even more money, uh, and it's also going to allow you to be better socially because you're actually a much cooler person now. You know, so then you wind up doing that. Um, then you can wind up, you know, digging a little bit deeper and kind of choose it. You know, now now you're 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 present, spiritually healthy, happy, less trauma, um, healthy, not getting sick, making a ton of money, tons of friends, dating whoever you want, amazing relationships, traveling the world. Well, now what happens? You start thinking a little bit more about um, a combination of both, like kind of how you want to kind of niche yourself, but you also start thinking about larger you know, the, the kind of like the larger picture of life. So, you know, you have your base foundation down at this point. And then you start thinking, well, what are some other like weird kind of like big projects that I want to take on or different angles that I want to want to do? And and at that point, it becomes kind of like a choose your own adventure video game. Um, in my case, I went and took some improv comedy. That was actually very, very tough to do. And I actually put in the time to attend improv comedy class. Um, you know, maybe you want to go take certain trips. 
Maybe you want to go take, like I took a ton of courses, ton of seminars. Maybe you want to go do that. Uh, there's a ton of different things that you could wind up doing and, and paths that you could go down. Um, maybe you want to start studying upper level management of businesses better because you can either bring in a manager leader or you can actually study um, this kind of stuff. You know, they, there's all sorts of study of management and execution and so on and so forth. And, it, you know, at a certain point, you, then you've got to start scaling, right? So, you, so what I did was I actually wound up learning how to do just about everything in the business personally and got to a seven or eight out of 10 level in some areas of 10. Um, so for example, like I'm an incredible video editor, you know, I spent years of video editing. Um, I'm a very good shooter. You might've seen videos with other instructors where I'm actually doing the shooting. So I often shoot other instructors. I often edit for other instructors. I, you know, shoot myself, edit for myself. Um, you know, you, you learn how to do your own accounting. You learn how to do all sorts of stuff yourself. But then at a certain point, you're like, well, I can't, I, I've got to learn how to multiply myself, right? I can't just sit here doing everything. So then you've got to start learning scaling. And again, it's like, you know, management and, um, you know, putting systems in place and not just handling things episodically and having a freak out when it doesn't work, but, you know, putting new systems in place and um, building a lot of systems and scaling it and deciding who you want to hire. And, and frankly, I had to say this, but you're going to learn a lot about human deception because uh, people are going to try to work as, many people will try to work as little as possible and they want to get paid as much as possible. And you're going to watch people that you view as family and friends betray you, stab you in the back and underperform and so on and so forth. They're going to let you down and you're going to offer them all this opportunity. And, you know, in many cases, you might be less profitable in a given month or year and you're literally taking like your own personal money, injecting in the business and then watching them burn it. They don't even give a fuck about it. You think you're like saving their job and they could care less about their fucking job. And you're going to see all sorts of stuff like this. It's going to drive you nuts. And it, it kind of takes you in a little bit of a dark place. And you're going to have to power through all that. And, you know, what winds up happening is between the dating stuff and seeing the kind of infidelity and cheating that you see and then around the money stuff where you see, uh, you know, people stealing. I mean, I don't know. I've, I've probably lost, I don't know. I mean, revenue to my business probably leaked out, I don't know, 20, 30, $40 million in money, you know, over 20 years, something like that. Like that wouldn't even be like, that's bad, but it's not like the end of the world. I don't know. I'm just guessing. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of theft and, and people like basically misbilling hours. Um, you know, I've, I'll find out like little simple things like, you know, somebody who's responsible for doing, uh, you know, checking in with everybody that signed up for like the free tour, you know, and you're like traveling the world doing the free tour and like they're just shirking on their work and like the free tours are like, you know, 30% less people are there because they didn't do their job because like one person decides that they want to shirk on their work. And like this affects like thousands of people and it affects millions of dollars and they just don't give a fuck. And you're like, how can you, how can you do this? Like, and how are they like, not that I would really put someone in prison, but like as sort of a thought experiment, like how are they not in jail for this? Like they've just cost millions, but somehow if you like yelled at them sometime, like you could probably get in trouble for that because you're the boss, but then they could like cost millions and like, it's like, leave them alone. Like it's not their fault. And it's like, okay, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Fair enough. I understand. That's how it works. Okay. I'll play ball. I accept that, you know, but it's just crazy and insane and human nature is insane. And, you, and so you see, you know, between dating and all the mass cheating that you see, so not your girl, of course, um, you know, and the special ones are different, right? And then, and then the, the embezzlement and the theft and then and everything surrounding celebrity. So you start to build a bit of social media profile. You start having celebrity. I, I've had it where like living in huge, huge cribs. This is a nice crib here, but I've lived in huge ones. You got every fucking riffraff coming over, trying to kind of get a little piece of it, giving you a song and dance about this, that, or the other thing. So now all of a sudden you got to kind of look at your circle. You've got to look at the people around you. You got to look at what you're scaling. And the biggest thing is you got to look at how you're using your time, right? Like time just becomes everything. And I think as, as you get older, um, you really do learn over time to kind of just like tune people out. Like this is a really, really big thing is like the way that I've learned to cope with this is I will joke with and give full present focus to anybody because I love doing that and I love the cup that runneth over and to share positive vibes. But to get me to have a serious conversation, to be honest with you, this might even sound weird, but even something again like this, Blueprint Reloaded right here and getting into a group, screening for people that are serious, to get me in a real conversation, you got to show me that you're serious, right? And like, again, I love in, engaging with a group like this because I know that people inside of it are serious. But for the most part, you realize like most people are not serious and they, they're either in a mode where they're self-destructive or takers or um, addicted to just like fucking the energy of death. And they're just, they're, they're not actually serious about building something like to even, to even get a basic level employee who's, who will self-initiate is a lot more expensive than you'd think, right? Because mo the average person can barely even self-initiate. Like they, they could barely, like, like they're literally just trying to like stay on autopilot 
medicate themselves with drugs and booze, video games, whatever, food, whatever, and then just like like just coast through life and, and minimize friction. Their, their upper levels of their brain are barely switched on. This is like God's creation, human beings, people that have a mother and a father, and it's like this is what came out of it. Like like imagine seeing that in your child. It's you know I I have respect for all human beings, and it just makes me sad that they're just they, they just let their potential just fall through the cracks like that. And it's completely insane, but that's kind of what happens. And so, you know, you probably go through phases like I have where like you spend years of your life trying to save people. I love you. I want to save you. I've done that with people I've dated relationships with, but also with staff employees trying to save everybody. And like, you know, there's an old J. Cole song, like she don't want to be saved. Don't save her. She don't want to be saved. Don't save her. And she really doesn't. When you'll hear me say sometimes crazy things, like it's like, it's like satanic possession. It's like, I will literally see such beautiful opportunities just burnt away. And, and you sit there trying to analyze the psychology of it and understand their misunderstanding. At a certain point, you realize that they're invested in their own misunderstanding and probably addicted to some kind of like satanic, sick-ass energy. And that's like a huge percentage of people. And at a certain point, you've just got to try to create boundaries around that, create your own little kingdom and be the leader in that kingdom. And the people in it are trusting you to keep that shit the fuck out. So all the scaling and whatnot, that's what happens as you get older. And then what I would say is like on the further end of it, it's going to come down to legacy. And you really only have so many years to leave your legacy. And that could be through your children. And I love my sons. I hope to have more children. But it's also um, something that you're looking at legacy-wise, right? You know, I spent um, a lot of years building this. It's a, it's a legacy piece for me. It's important to me. It's why I promote it. It's an important legacy piece. When I'm dead, this will be there, my best seminar over many years. Uh, but it's also things like my, the outdoor video series that I shot that's not out yet. And that's, that's many years of my life. That's a legacy piece. Um, different things that I've been involved in politically and things like that that have been huge legacy pieces and big wins. And it's one of these things where you've got to decide where your energy is going to go. And that's a legacy piece. And that's, um, you only have so much time. And one of the really cool things about me being 44 has been that I really don't waste my fucking time. I know I, I've got 15 years left till 60. And look, the truth is as you get older, gotta be honest with you, you could die any given day, right? You, you wouldn't usually see a 20 or 30 year old keel over. People in their 40s can keel over randomly. They can. No day is guaranteed, you know? And so uh, that leads me to kind of the last thing I want to say, which is also how much you can have fun, right? And that's things like, um, you know, the half decade that I took off to spend with my children recently. Like, I, you know, I used to push my social media so hard back in the day. Mostly just do some lives now, stuff like that. But it's also um, getting to spend time with your family and your loved ones and actually having fun and saying, what does this mean to me? I want to have fun. And for me, that was even tough because a lot of people that I try to bring through those beautiful experiences, they're not quite ready to have their fun yet. And realizing like you got to get around people that are ready to have fun, serious about enjoying life, serious people about it. And again, like I said with this, that is often a screen to see people that are serious. A lot of people who you bring into the fun reality that you're trying to create, you haven't had them invest into it the way you have because they've you've been through this period of decades to build out what you've built, right? The, the process that we've just described over this past hour. Thank you for being here for this past hour, by the way. You've been through that. They haven't. They haven't. And they have no idea what any of it means to you. You know, you're, you're at some beautiful sushi dinner that represents to you a, like, like, like a watch could, you know, that beautiful sushi dinner or that walk down the beach in Miami. That represents to you a capstone for a life that was challenging, a life that pushed you to your edge and a life well lived. And you want to, and that's like a moment for you to like reflect on the past 20 years. And they're just like, I didn't like that this happened. You know, you're just like, <laughs> like, are you tone deaf? You're like, you know, like you've, you've been shuttled into this reality that, that you have not had the chance to invest into and you're getting the perks of it. And I've gone through this and this to get the same experience. You're getting, you're getting it at a discount. Well, what do you learn about life? It's like free videos. People don't appreciate that, which is free. <clears throat> and so there's a, a, a principle in Kabbalah, which is sort of like an offshoot of Judaism. Um, and basically what it says is, in order to prepare the vessel to receive, you have to give. And so that's what I would kind of leave you with is like, when you go through this journey, when the beautiful things happen to you, you'll be able to actually enjoy them. And you'll see it in the people who you bring along for the journey who didn't invest in it. They're not able to enjoy it in the same way because they haven't developed the palate. And the best thing that can happen for them is that maybe they actually don't have those perks anymore. And what happens is that they can do their own journey of it. And I've had a number of friends and, and people in my life that you know had a taste for the good life um, via their experience with me. And then what happened was it fell off because they couldn't just keep enjoying it. It doesn't make any sense anymore. And they actually go, wait, I want to build something of my own like this. And they wind up building their own version of their vision. And you know what's funny about it? 
they come to me years later and they say, hey, I'm really sorry that we fell out. I, I now have gone on my own journey and I see how hard this is. And I have a lot more respect for you now. You know, maybe it's a little mad about this or this, but I have more respect for, for what you experienced now. I see how hard it was and I see that you were under a lot of pressure. And now I am finally able to enjoy it. And that's really the main lesson, isn't it? It's this. You cannot even fucking enjoy whatever awesome life you build unless you put in the work. You can't. You can't do it. You have to empty up the vessel in order to receive the joy that you'll experience by 35, 45, whatever, when you really put in the work is so much greater than some rich kid that got it handed to them or somebody who got it easy. You'll experience that incredible joy. And you want to know something? I said this video is for people that are in their 20s, but I was saying that as a bitch slap in the face of people in their 30s and 40s and 50s because I do believe that you could do this. You could do it in two, three years. You could do it faster than a 20-year-old can. I mean, good God, how much more resourceful and intelligent you are by your 30s and 40s than by 20. That's like that's like a like a 10-year-old to a 20-year-old. Think of how much faster a 20-year-old could be than a 10-year-old. It's not that different as you get older. But you've got to actually roll up your sleeves and, and get past your little dignity filter and actually just do it. you got to get serious about it. And so this is really call it to people that are serious. If you're serious about this work and you want to go through this together, you've got to have mentors. Get inside of this, www.blueprintreload.com. Get inside this now. Let's work together. Let's get to work. Are you serious? Are you ready to get to work? Are you ready to build this? It's an incredible journey. And what I want to do here is to be your guide. So I'll see you inside of Blueprint Reloaded. I'm excited to get started. Thank you very much. We'll do our next video with Sam. We'll get a fun one with Sam coming up. We'll be back with more soon. Enjoy the journey.